galing ang tubig. Ang sarap kaya ng may malinis na supply ng tubig, eh yung tubig sa gripo nyo, yung binabayaran ninyo buwan-buwan, alam nyo ba kung saan galing? Siyempre, sa mga anyong yung tubig din, gaya ng Angat River at Ipo Dam. Iipo ng tubig sa Angat Dam at Reservoir. Tumadaan ng tubig mula sa Angat River at Ipo Dam sa napakahaba at napakalalaking mga tubo punta La Mesa Dam. Mula sa La Mesa Dam, dadalhin naman ng tubig sa tatlong treatment plants ng Manila Water. Ang Balara Water Treatment Plant 1 and 2 at ang La Mesa Water Treatment Plant. Kasama ng milyon-milyong litro ng tubig at gamit na tubig na nililinis sila araw-araw, kilo-kilomerong linya ng tubig na nilatag at nilalatag nila ang pinagsamang malasakit at galing na ng mga taga Manila Water sa lahat ng tinaya na ito. Hindi pwedeng trip lang ito. High-tech ito. Malalim ito. Mission ito. Dito sa water treatment plant ng Manila Water, nililinis ang tubig bago ito makarating sa inyong mga bahay. Sa lamesa ng pala, tumitining na ang tubig. Ibig sabihin na iipon na sa ilalim ang mabibigat na dumi. Pagkatapos, dadaan ito sa unang process, coagulation. Sa coagulation, nilalagyan ng liquid aluminum sulfate o alum ang tubig. Mayroon kasing mga lumulutang-lutang na dumi sa tubig na kung tawagin ay colloids. Pero kapag nahaluan sila ng tawas, nagdidikit-dikit sila at pag nagdikit-dikit, lumalaki at bumibigat sila. Kaya mas madaling alisin sa tubig. Kapareho lang halos ng coagulation ang susunod na proses, ang flocculation. Pero sa halip na alum ang hinahalo, polymer ang nilalagay sa tubig. Parang magnet ang polymer. Dumidikit dito ang mga nabuong colloids. Hanggang sa bumigat at lumubog sila sa ilalim ng tubig. Pagkatapos nito, sedimentation naman. Dinadala ang tubig papunta sa sedimentation tanks gamit ang mahahabang tubo. Dahil medyo nakahiga ang mga tubo, naiiwan ang mabibigat na clocks. Sa maniwala ka at sa hindi, mayroon pa rin natirang dumi at bakterya sa tubig kaya dadaan pa uli ito sa filtration process. Lumulusot sa mga filter beds na gawa sa pinong bato at buhangin ang tubig. Sa pangatlong pagkakataon, lalagyan uli ng chlorine ang tubig para patayin ang masasamang bakterya. For quite some time, uh, especially when we, we need chemicals or network materials, thank you for your continued support and uh, very good partnership with us. Uh, this afternoon, I am joined by colleagues in procurement as well as inventory and warehouse management and also by colleagues from uh, finance and uh, from project management and uh, then uh, BNB. And later, you will find out more about our requirements nga po and some of the processes we would request you to uh, be mindful of as we uh, procure or buy services and products. Uh, we'd really like to strengthen our partnerships and communications with you, especially since uh, this year and next year, we have in Manila Water uh, a need to roll out a capital plan of about 40 billion sa capita, capex pa lang po yun. And uh, also, on a yearly basis, uh, billions din po yung aming requirement when it comes to supporting operations. And we know that uh, we wouldn't be able to do it without your help and support. And uh, in, during the pandemic, we did make some adjustments and we continue to adapt especially in how we work and how we uh, conduct our processes. Uh, I understand hindi po, wap po siya perfect on our end. So we would also like to hear your feedback on how we, would we could continue to improve. 
So, mamaya-maya po, our, uh, our team in Manila Water and also our partners in PNB will give the blow and blow-by-blow blow by blow detail of uh, yun pong mga na-mention ko na earlier. Uh, we can share some of the decks with you because we know that uh, those are important for your guidance as we continue to to ask you if you could provide services and products to, to us. So we hope that you will ask questions and you will, we hope that you will give feedback and comment uh, for, for us to also check whether we are, there are things that uh, can still be improved or made faster as we continue to adapt and respond to our needs amid the pandemic. So yun lang po yung aking maigsing uh, opening because uh, each of the presenters you will meet later uh, have uh, a lot of details to present to you. So please uh, feel free to ask questions po. Thank you. Angeline was Ms. Evangeline Clement, a supply chain management group director for Manila Water. So as I'm sure all of our are quite excited, as a matter of fact, we are expecting upwards of 300 of Manila Water's existing and potential business partners to join us this afternoon. But we will move forward with the event with any um, business opportunities with some of the top buyers here in the Philippines, you would notice that you will always have to start with a pre-qualification with CRIF Dun & Bradstreet Philippines. To speak to us and to talk about the pre-qualification process of CRIF Dun & Bradstreet with MWCI, we would like to welcome Ms. Um, Evelyn Alasco, Business Development uh, Leader for CRIF DNB. Ms. Evelyn, hello and good afternoon. Thank you, Arden. Good afternoon, isang magandang hapon sa ating lahat, business partners, and for um, potential uh, business partners uh, when we undergo the pre-qualification program of CRIF DNB2 via. So um, just to uh, manage expectations, um, I'll be discussing in, in today's afternoon session our role as CRIF DNB to the accreditation process of MWCI and um, the objective of VIA to you as a vendor and the, and the objective of VIA to the perspective of buyers. So just to give you a quick snapshot about VIA. So basically VIA is an online compliance platform which is designed to help business grow within the VIA community. Currently we have about over 80 buyers or clients that requires all their existing and potential vendors to undergo our process using this platform. And um, to, the, to the standpoint of a vendor, like what I've mentioned a while ago, we help companies grow their business using this platform simply because we create opportunity for you to uh, offer your services to other buyers that you would like to um, uh, you know, uh, offer your services. For example, a chemical supplier. Uh, we we only we also have other industries that might need your um, services. So, like for example, Manila Water is in need of chemical suppliers and other um, clients of Cliff, of Cliff D and B that would like to um, get you on board using this platform. And our role, so in terms of our role with, with uh, MWCI, so basically we're just the first step of the accreditation. So what we do, we uh, basically in charge of the legal and financial assessment of the accreditation process of MWCI, meaning to say all the nitty gritty like um, submission of the uh, documents using this platform, we will uh, basically uh, review those uploaded documents and evaluate you based on the criteria set by the MWCI team. So for you to have a understanding on how to uh, undergo our process, first is we need to set you up in our uh, portal. So um, in most cases, MWCI will uh, email us your details to uh, or endorse you to us to undergo the process. And after that, se uh, the second step is you need to identify which category you belong in. For example, if you are a micro, regular, or pickup, 
And then uh, after that, you need to settle a fee, which depends on your uh, category. And then after the payment, you need to upload the required documents, depends on the requirements of the specific buyer. In this case, in this case, this is for MWCI and last, which is also critical because in most cases, ang iba after payment tapos na. But uh, in reality, hanggang, hanggang dulo po dapat ang ginagawa natin, which is we need to monitor our pre-qualification status using this platform. Okay, so after payment, ulitin ko po, meron pa pong next step, which is uh, the third process is to upload the requirements. And a friendly reminder, when we do upload the required documents, uh, the capacity or the capability of the VIA, we can still accept yung documents natin up to 50 MB per file. So, ang mabigat lang naman na requirements natin based on the study na rin ni Cliff DNB is that only the audited financial statements. Pero hindi naman siya pumapalo ng 50 MB per file. So, the maximum is 20 MB. So, there is no problem in terms of file size. And then, when we upload, we need to ensure na correct and right file name. Simply because um, itong VIA, it is not only available sa amin, sa inyo. It's also viewed by different users of MWCI. So, uh, either vendor management yan or the internal proponents ng MWCI, they also um, check yung mga documents natin. So, that Tama. When we say BIR 2303, we need to ensure na ang naka-upload is BIR 2303 and not the GIS, etc. And then the um, format, it should be in PDF, not in TIFF file or in JPEG. And then we provide you a specific timeline or period when you need to upload your requirements. So ang standard decree of DNB, it's uh, three months at the maximum. But then again, um, depende sa deadline ni uh, MWCI. Kung sasabihin ni MWCI ang deadline is on April 30, then we need to enforce that deadline. So yun po yung i-communicate namin sa inyo within the certain um, follow-ups or ano, a communication with our Viacast Care to you. So one month yung i-communicate namin. Okay, then after that, so upload na natin yung mga requirements. Okay, so last process of VIA is we need to monitor kung anong status na natin. So when you log in dun sa ating portal, um, you will use your own existing or issued username and then your uh, created password when you log into VIA. But, uh, as part of the requirement, like what we mentioned kanina, it's VRF or the online vendor registration form, wherein we need to input this information, the likes of company information, company details, uh, business details, and projects. So, kailangan natin ilagay yan. Um, this is also accessible with the buyers, like um, not only for MWCI, but this is also accessible sa mga inapplyan ninyong buyers within the VIA community. Okay, so sa projects naman, it's ano, uh, ongoing and completed projects. Normally, this is um, required for a contractor. Documents. Okay, as you can see, there's a common and module documents. So, meron tayong um, segmentation na ginawa sa documents. No? The reason being is that um, for the common requirements or common documents, this is um, the common documents na hinihingi ng buyers namin. So I've mentioned kanina, we have about over 80 buyers that requires their suppliers to undergo our process. And kung halimbawa, you've applied for other buyers, the Cliff DNB, and then it's up, updated, active, then you don't need to submit this business permit, BIR 2303, GIS, um, AFS, so long na at tayo ay um, active yung ating application. And then if uh, hindi naman, then we need to update our information or the documents that we've uploaded sa VIA. And then the module documents, this means ito yung mga specific forms na unique sa MWCI. The likes of green metrics, the likes of um, code of conduct, um, confidentiality, uh, non-disclosure form, etc. So yun yung mga specific forms na nire-require ni MWCI na kailangan natin i-upload sa module documents. Highlight ko lang po, meron dyan clickable na color red, uh, wherein once we've uploaded the documents, with uh, friendly reminder lang, uh, 
don't forget to click that submit button kasi that will trigger our document analyst to review yung mga in-upload nating requirements for MWCI application. Subscriptions. For subscription, dito natin makikita kung anong status na natin sa application natin or even dun sa membership natin. So, for example, uh, like what I've mentioned kanina, you've applied for a, for a certain buyer and then uh, updated pa yon. Makikita nyo kung ano yung mga uh, different statuses ninyo per application. For example, for MWCI, it's report delivered, meaning to say we were able to assess your company based on the criteria of Manila Water. And, of course, ang gagawin ko as a supplier, lalapitan ko na ngayon si MWCI. And I will ask them to, what's the next step? Which is later on, they discuss ni MWCI yung technical evaluation nila. And um, always be proactive kasi minsan, uh, hindi ko naman po nila lahat. Uh, minsan, may mga nakakausap kami na patapos na yung one year, hindi pa na ma-maximize yung kanilang investment with the pre-qualification because they've waited for the call ng aming buyers. Where in fact, dapat tayo mismo ay uh, lalapit. After the first step, tawid na agad sa client or probably you just send us an email and we'll help you connect with the buyer and see kung ano yung next step na Kasi not all companies naman uh, or industries are required for a technical evaluation. Depende kay MWCI kung ano mga categories na kailangan i-undergo ng technical evaluation. For business information report, this is where you can find kung halimbawa tayo ay premium, all access, or um, basic uh, membership, then you have the uh, copy of your own business information report. In a way, you have an idea kung ano yung assessment namin sa inyo or kung ano yung rating namin sa inyo as a company. Then last is the upgrade or renew now. So sa upgrade or renew now, um, this is where I can do my uh, lead gen. So critical, I'm not sure kung lahat tayo dito ay mga sales, ano, uh, sales managers, account managers, or from the sales and marketing team. This is a um, good tool for us to uh, offer and have that ano, uh, venue to check a potential lead using VIA. Kasi this is, uh, ito yung mga buyers namin, managing expectations. Not all buyers are visible. Meron kami tinatawag na visible and not visible buyers. But if you are interested to offer your services, feel free to um, get in touch with us and we'll help. We'll uh, be very happy to connect you with our um, buyers. So, dyan po mangyayari yung yung grow your business within the VIA community. Kasi it's not only um, for MWCI. You can offer your services to the likes of Aboitis Power Group. So medyo maraming company yan kasi isang application lang. Uh, Ayala Lad. Okay. Uh, medyo marami din yan kasi lahat ng subsidiaries niyan uh, kasama dyan sa pre-qualification and other um, companies or buyers na nasa VIA platform. So, explain ko lang po na ang membership natin currently with um, with MWCI, we are a coupon member. Meaning to say, free po yung membership natin. So, yung ating fees na babayaran for the pre-qualification is only uh, designed, kumbaga discounted rate na yon, Kasi um, MWCI negotiated um, nun, when the time na nag-discuss nag the SLA. And... So given the fact that your coupon and uh, ang ating um, ma-avail doon is that the uh, application to upload yung ating requirements with a specific buyer, which is MWCI. So kung halimbawa we wanted to be visible, we wanted to access more buyers, then we have the chance now to upgrade our membership from coupon to premium or via all access. So ano po ba ang kaiba kaibahan nito? So I think yung iba dito nag via all access eh. Last year we just launched our product, uh, the highest tier of membership ng via which is all access no mid ano 2020 to help address yung mga um, specific uh, pain points ng vendors uh, or ng partners simply because ang concern natin dati is that kung meron na akong application say sa li limang client ni Cruf DNB, do I need to pay ba ulit? So, yun yung common na na, 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 na concern eh. 
And then, um, because of that, kasi hindi lang isa lang naman nagre-raise noon, madami. So, because of that, we've um, think on a certain solution that will have address yung pain points na yon. So, like what I've mentioned, as of last year, no, uh, July 2020, uh, we've launched our VIA All Access, which addresses yung, yung isa sa pain points ni partners. In terms of, wala ba kayong isahang, isahang payment na lang tapos lahat applyan ko? So, may mga ganong uh, companies na nag inquire And we've, we've addressed that. Second, if we are proactively looking for um, leads, then you can use this platform to find potential leads. Again, managing expectation, of course, depende yan sa industry natin. Kasi hindi naman po lahat ng, uh, o, ng buyers na nasa VIA is, is potential uh, lead. Kaya po nag-create din part ng VIA All Access kung nakukulangan tayo dun sa 80 buyers or uh, over 70 buyers na meron kami, then we can help you um, generate 50 companies depende sa industry na hinahanap ninyo. And then most, and uh, I think it's critical on, also from the standpoint of finance and credit and collection is yung ano, bang rep, ano ba yung credit report ng mga prospect natin. So as all access, you have the uh, part of the benefit or advantage is that you can request CRIF DNB to provide you the copy of the credit report ng aming mga buyers. So that's, uh, that's I, I think yun yung I, I'd like to highlight kasi lahat naman yun ay nire-require ng finance, no? yung, ano yung risk mitigation. Kumuha ka ng kliyente, okay, ano yung risk mitigation na uh, kailangan ko makita yung report naman ng client na papasok natin. So, again, uh, kung tayo po ay interesado with the all access, please feel free to reach out to us. You may contact us there. Thank you. So, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, uh, my email address is e.nolasco at crif.com and then the, those are the hotlines na may, pwede ninyong tawagan. Or kung um, you want to set a meeting with me to discuss further risk mitigation or part of it is the MWCI process, feel free to reach out at my uh, zero na at my number. Yung nasa dulo po, yan yung number ko. Okay, so thank you and isang magandang hapon po sa ating lahat business partners. Thank you very much, Ms. Evelyn. That was Ms. Evelyn Alasco from Griff Dun and Bradstreet, Philippines, discussing the uh, first step of accreditation with MWCI, which is the qualification process through CRIF, Don, and Bradstreet. So, maraming maraming salamat, Ms. Evelyn. Later on this program, we will be um, talking and exploring the available projects and opportunities within MWCI. But before that, we would like to introduce Muna's Engineer Don Dalangin, the Head of Engineering technical standards for MWCI to discuss on um, the technical requirements as well as the uh, um, type of vendors na hinahanap ng MWCI from a technical standpoint. I'm Dom Dalangin, head of the uh, uh, technical standards section under engineering department. So uh, today we'll discuss yung uh, technical accreditation. So as discussed with Ma'am Evelyn, uh, after the DNB accreditation, uh, you will undergo the technical accreditation. So I will also discuss the difference between the two. So these are this is the process for the technical evaluation. First, you apply, then for you will be endorsed for the DNB accreditation. And the third one, after the DNB accreditation, you will be endorsed for the technical accreditation. So thank you very much, Sir Dom. I saw uh, that um, a couple of our participants had some technical and audio difficulties. Um, we will confirm with Manila Water if we can share that part of uh uh, Sir Dom's presentation to the to hear the uh, the presentation as a whole. Forward, uh, after uh, technical evaluation, of course, um, if you will notice that most of the companies, if not all of the companies that we invited this afternoon, belong within the uh, chemical distribution manufacturing uh, sector. And to speak about the uh, chemical requirements of Manila Water, as well as the uh, as well as the, uh, the the chemical treatment requirements 
that the uh, MWCI is requiring, we would like to introduce Ms. Lynn Zamora, the Treatment Operations Head from Manila Water. Ms. Lynn? Okay, thank you. I would like to um, take this opportunity to express my appreciation and thanks for the organizer for inviting me and of course, uh, ating mga attendees. So we wouldn't, I wouldn't take um, much of your time for the introduction. So next slide, please. So as a background, just for, for the information of everybody, where, where as, why are we using these chemicals and what is this, um, the background behind this? So Manila water supply system consists of three uh, major pillars. That is the sourcing. Dito yung ating raw water abstraction, collection, and then conveyance. So it's very clear to you na ito yung ating mga, mga dams and also some of our lakes and rivers, rivers that we are getting sources from. Then the water goes through our water treatment plants wherein raw water is being processed, um, ready for distribution as compliance to the PNSDW standards. And of course, with the, um, we also process the waste management that um, our water treatment plants are incurring. After that, it goes through the distribution system in which um, drinking water are stored and finally distributed to the customers. So to, give, to begin with, we have um, currently um, three systems. So we call this the first system as the Angat Ipo La Mesa system. So this is very common to everybody. It has been um, already um, um, in the news. If you know about, if you heard about Angat Dam. So this is where much uh, more um, around 60 to 70 percent of our production is coming from. It is, this is from Angat. So it goes, it is coming from the Angat um, Ipo Omirai, Angat Omirai River system. It goes through the Angat, so it's being refilled and it's being managed by our NWRB and Angat Hydro. So water goes through the conveyance via Ipo Dam. Um, Ipo Dam is not um, a catchment, it is just a conveyance. It's a diversion dam from Ipo, uh, from Angat going to the La Mesa portal. So in the La Mesa portal, um, doon na, na magahate, no? Kung naririnig nyo na yung hatian namin with Maynilad. So the 60% goes to the west zone, which is um, managed by Maynilad, and then the 40% goes to the east zone, that is um, Manila water. So in Manila water, we have the La Mesa Dam that serves our primary sedimentation basin and, of course, storage. So La Mesa Dam is being refilled via water coming from um, Angat Ipo if there are excess and, and water coming from the watershed along the La Mesa watershed. Another alternative sources aside from um, the Angat system which we have uh, which we are getting water much of our water sources we are Manila water is right now exploring already water coming from the um, Laguna Lake and we also have um, we are also getting sources from our groundwater and recently, this year, we will be getting water from Marikina River. So why I, am I showing this is because um, the, the water treatment chemicals that we will be needing in our water treatment process really depends no, on where we are getting the water from. So if it is um, relatively cleaner um, water that is like um, Angat, and Ipo La Mesa, so we can expect what are the chemicals that we will be using. And of course, for this kind of alternative water sources, it will be um, a different story. Alam naman natin lahat kung ano yung situation natin in Laguna Lake and the more in Marikina River. Um, the Laguna Lake system, this is the newest. We started getting um, water from Laguna Lake last 2019. Um, with the first operation of our Cardona water treatment plant. Later, I will discuss more um, on the process so that um, from there, we can see what will be the Manila water requirements. And in the future, um, around 2023, um, probably end of 2022 to 2023, we will be operating um, another water treatment plant, which is also getting water from the Guna Lake, the East Bay Water Treatment Plant. 
aside from the Angat system and the Laguna Lake system, we are also using already our um, groundwater sources. Right now, we have 82 deep well um, with a rated capacity of 100 MLD. So basically, some of the problems that we are encountering in the raw water quality related to deep well are um, iron and manganese. They are the common ones. So all the treatment um, chemicals that will that will be used to to address these contaminants are really one of our um, requirements. So this time um, for 2021, we are already um, using Marikana River as um, one of our raw water source. It is situated near the um, the portion of the Nangka River. So that's along the Marikana River from in one of our um, wastewater treatment plant, we just utilize the extra lot there and build up our own um, water treatment plant. So this is also uh, another type of water sources in which the contaminants are also unique. So the raw water quality that we would be addressing here, of course, um, will also be different. That's why we, we will be adding, this will be an addition to more of our um, treatment chemicals um, requirement. So just to give you a background, um, <clears throat> we already have um, six, uh, as of 2021, we already have six water treatment plants. So the oldest, uh, Balara Treatment Plant 1, with a capacity of 470 million liters per day, that was established in the 1950s, uh, 1930s. So it distributes water to portions of San Juan, um, Santo Domingo, Cubao, and some parts of Makati. And then the capacity and the largest, um, the largest is the Balara Treatment Plant 2, which is um, 1130 million liters per day. It was established last 1950s. It, it distributes to the influence area to Tandang Sora, Katipunan, Tagig, Pasig, and parts of Marikina, Rizal, Makati, and some parts of Mandaluyong. And then we have the third is the East La Mesa Treatment Plant. This is located along Payatas Road. It distributes water to the portions of San Mateo and Rodriguez. It is a 150 million liters per day, and it was established by uh, last 2012. This is the first treatment plant that is um, being um, built by Manila Water because the two old ones are are way back from um, MWSS pa. So they were just turned over facilities and Manila Water improved lang um, in terms of automation and other equipment. The third, uh, I mean the fourth, um, it's the first advanced and the first reverse osmosis treatment plant that we have is the Cardona water treatment plant. It's a 100 MLD capacity. It was just in operation last 2019 and it distributes um, to our customers in Baras, Halahala, Angono, Binangonan, and some parts of um, Pasig. And if you are aware of the water crisis last, May, last 2019, the Luzon treat these two small package treatment plants um, um, came up to the minds of Manila Water as part of our contingency and resiliency project in delivering um, continuous supply to our customers. We have the Luzon treatment plant, um, which is a small package treatment plant. It's a um, ultra filtration system. It is a uh, 20 million liters per day capacity. It was just built last 2019 also, and it distributes to the three barangay of the higher portions of Quezon City. And the latest um, is the Marikina treatment plant. It is a 20 million liters per day, and it will be in operation sometime this April. Okay, so it also it will also help in um to the distribution of our customers in Marikina. So of the six, um, three of which are conventional treatment plants. So that will, of course, um, give us an idea what will be the chemicals that we will be needing if the type of water treatment process that we are um, doing in our facilities are conventional. So to start, um, I will share to you the process. So this is a conventional water treatment plant um, process. And if you... Um, have shown in the video, it's a, 
it's explained somewhat no kung how how does water is being distributed so this may be very um technical and some of you i think knows this already so in every step of the process there is a, the indicated um, water treatment chemical requirement that we will be needing in the three um three big treatment plants or the conventional treatment plants that manila water have so basically we have the prechlorination so we have, this is the initial disinfection oxidation of iron and manganese and then some taste and odor removal so we use here right now we are currently using liquid chlorine then coagulation of course any kind of coagulant will be used it is um, added to negate the negative surface charge of our colloidal, colloidal particles such that um, magbuo -buo sila and we can remove the suspended solids so right now for the conventional water treatment plants we are using polyaluminum chloride and aluminum sulfate and we are also having a um, pH adjustment if it's um, from the water sources that we have um, the angat system it's basically um, acidic so we are using for now is caustic soda we need to increase the raw water especially if there is um, um, occurrence of manganese um, we need to dose caustic soda um, at this after the coagulation and then flocculation of course that's the we are using cationic polymer and sometimes it depends upon the charges of our suspended solids we are also using anionic um, polymer but most of the time we are using cationic polymer so the sedimentation form flocks are settled out and then we inject um, that's another the second stage of our chlorination the intermediate chlorination so again that's liquid chlorine just to protect um, our filter um, from from biofouling and then we have filtration so it's just um, a two a dual media we are using anthracite and silica sand for our conventional treatment plants and once there will be changes in um, ph along the process we are raising it again to meet the pnsdw standard so there's another dose there of um, caustic soda and at the last stage that is to meet the pnsdw requirement for residual chlorine we injected on the last stage the post chlorination another liquid chlorine dosing and for the sludge treatment facility for us to to dewater and separate the solids and the liquid prior to disposal we are using um, cationic polymer also okay so the three new um, this is a um, totally different from our ten conventional treatment plants um, each of them are unique it has different um, they do not have a common process um, it varies no the operations and the treatment chemicals that we are using in these three three treatment plants are uh, varies from facility to facility so to start this is from the cardona water treatment plant which gets water from laguna lake this is the process so it's an advanced treatment first we have a ph adjustment from the raw water from the laguna lake we adjust the ph it depends upon um if it is um we want it to be higher or lower so if we want it to be higher we dose caustic soda and if we wanted it to be lower we dose sulfuric acid after that the water goes through our ozonation so here um we are using because we are we already know that um it's common to our knowledge that um algae is um very evident in laguna lake so um we use ozone to attack and some of the microbiological issues here in um, the organics and other um, microbiological contaminants in the lake so we use um, liquid oxygen and we have our um, in-house built um, ozonator so we we generate ozone um, in-house so we are dosing or we are procuring liquid oxygen here after that it goes through the coagulation process so basically it this has also the pre this is already the pre-treatment stage prior to our reverse osmosis so we have the coagulation here in 
Cardona, we are using two as a flexibility, it depending upon the raw water quality. We are using um, ferric chloride and um, poly polyaluminum chloride. So in, in Laguna Lake for the Cardona water treatment plant, since it's still a new new plant, we are continuously exploring um, other um, coagulants that may be customized and that will give us a more cost efficient process. So, hindi naman kami tumitigil dito na stop na to sa ferric and PACL. We, we are open to kung ano pa man yung available sa market ng mga coagulants at mahanap kung ano yung customized fit to the raw water quality of Laguna Lake such that it will give us a more efficient um, chemical efficiency. So, yung sa flocculation, again, um, it depends upon the charges of our suspended solids, we are using here anionic polymer and cationic polymer. And the sedimentation, since the, the Cardona water treatment plant is a very uh, fast, no, mabilis yung process niya, we have no time for settling there given the footprint as compared to our Balara treatment plants where we have a very big basin. So marami, marami kaming spaces doon, unlike dito sa Cardona, kaya we are injecting a ballast. So the, pal the ballast that we are using right now is um, the microsand just to aid in the settling of our flocks. Um, next is given that there are um, taste and other compounds in the lake, um, seasonally may lumalabas dyan sa, sa lake na mga um, yung tinatawag natin mga geosmine and MIB. So we are treating them by adding powder activated carbon dito na pumapasok yung removal ng ating mga organic compounds so we are using um, powder activated carbon after that um, when the what does the flocks or the sludge is being settled so the the clean water goes through um, the oxidation and ph adjustment for manganese treatment. Uh, medyo common din ang iron and manganese and some dissolved metal sa lake at some point in the season. So, kung lalo na kapag summertime. So, this is this is where we are ready in those things we are using here. Our oxidant is the potassium permanganate and our pH adjustment, the caustic soda. So, after that, if the water already passed through our um, um, pass through the requirements of our reverse osmosis. If it is, if the total dissolved solids or the salinity is higher, we goes the water goes through our reverse osmosis system. So we have two filtration system. We have the um, media, the conventional bed, which is um, using um, pumice sand, and then if it if before the filtration, I, I after the filtration, I pasado na siya sa PNSDW in terms of total dissolved solids. Eh, Dederecho na siya sa aming raw, uh, treated water tank. Pero kapag uh, mataas pa rin ang total dissolved solids and the salinity, it goes through another step. Ito yung ating reverse osmosis. So it's as a default for a reverse osmosis system, um, we are using anti scalant um sbs or the sodium bisulfite and then we are using citric acid and sodium hypochlorite for the maintenance of our membrane sometimes if um, when we are doing our clean in place or um, cleaning our membranes or our cartridge filters we are using citric acid and sodium hypochlorite depending on the the type of contaminant that goes through our membranes. So in um, um in the two years operation of Cardona, it was already established that um the salinity of Laguna Lake increases during um it's it will start in May, um, May, and then it will um medyo tumataas na yung TDS and chlorides concentration starting na ng May and then pababa na siya by October. So technically, half of the year, we are using reverse osmosis. So si Cardona, I halos, um, it really worked as a desalination plant already.
And of course, um, before we distribute our water to our customers, we we injected um, liquid chlorine for um, to meet the PNSDW standards and to protect you know, the integrity of our water as we distribute through our pipelines in terms of microbiological quality. So, medyo masalimuot at complex itong process sa Cardona, but um, this is very um, exciting. Next slide, please. So, this one, this is the, it's another advanced water treatment process. This is the process that is being utilized by Marikina treatment plan. So, if the Cardona pala is a 100 MLD, ito naman is a 20 MLD lang. Pero given the, um, in terms of consumption, itong mga madumi yung raw water are really consuming a lot of chemicals, even if they are only um, in small capacity. So, dito sa um, Marikina, we have the pretreatment, we have a coagulation, flocculation, settling, and then pH adjustment. So here, we use caustic soda, HCl, caustic soda and HCl for pH adjustment. We are using here, we will be using here um, ACH as our coagulant, and of course, our polymer as flocculant, cationic polymer. It goes through the oxidation since um, si Marikina River ay medyo mataas din yung significant din yung concentration ng iron tsaka manganese. And with the aid of aeration, so we have there um, in the next step, we added sodium hypochlorite. Then it goes through um, a strainer wherein the oxidized water goes through a strainer to remove the larger particles kung meron yung mga precipitates. And then it goes through... UF. Um, given kasi itong Marikina treatment plant, dahil nakigamit lang kami ng space doon na minadali lang doon sa parking lot ng aming Marikina North um, STP, um, we have we do not have a luxury to use um, concrete beds no or gravity beds. So, we utilize here ultra filtration system. So, here as um, part of the maintenance, we are using sodium hypochlorite, citric acid, and HCl during um, cleaning, but um, hindi naman siya dinodose. After that, um, given na uh, may mga metals, ang Marikina River, um, hindi man siya TDS, wala mang total dissolved solids ang Marikina River, we, we, we installed or we put in the reverse osmosis to make sure we have a uh, multi-barrier approach, no? kasi medyo madumi talaga yung tubig sa Marikina River. So there is, again, we have a reverse osmosis installed here. This is to, fil to further filter out yung concentration. Tapos yun nga, yung to, to completely clean out, lalo na na yung mga metals. So again, for a reverse osmosis system, um, default naman, eh, nandun yung anti-scalant, SMBS, and the citric acid during maintenance. After that, it goes through our um, treated water tank, but um, we will be injecting again liquid chlorine for um, the PNSW standard for residual chlorine. Last one, this is just a simple but um, compact um, water treatment plant, the Luzon treatment plant. Basically, it's a cleaner because the raw water is coming from Angat. So, nag-bypass lang kami ng, um, kumuha lang kami ng tubig from the conveyance, along the conveyance of the aqueduct from from La Mesa going to Balara to get water and then treat, then distribute it to our customers. Kaya maliit lang to and it's compact and technically it's a cleaner raw water, kaya no no complexity in the process. So we have a pre-chlorination again for, um, for some of the iron and manganese and some other um, compounds that needs to be oxidized. We are using here calcium hypochlorite. For coagulation, we have um, set up just in case um, there is a requirement from our UF na mababa dapat yung kanyang turbidity. So, ano lang to, abang, abang lang to. We are using here PACL or the polyaluminum chloride. And then we have pH adjustment. We are using caustic soda for manganese treatment. And then polymer again for the flocculation. Then for the filtration, we are using here UF. So, again, for... The maintenance of our ultrafiltration, we will be using sodium hypo, citric acid, and HCl. 
After that, it goes through the post-chlorination process. We have the calcium hypochlorite, and is and if needed, we will be injecting caustic soda for pH correction. Okay, so those are the treatment process. So to summarize, these are all the list of chemicals that we are using right now in green. It's shaded in green. So, and these are the angle system, what we call the angle system. They are composed of the three big conventional treatment plants, the BTP1, BTP2, and Isla Mesa. So yan lahat ang ginagamit namin. Um, Nandiyan na rin si Cardona and then Marikina. But of course, as I mentioned, um, we are currently exploring um, some of the chemicals as an alternative for flocculant. We have the polyamine uh, and then the ferric sulfate for the coagulant, polydadmac for the flocculant, and then aluminum chloride um, for the coagulant. We are also looking for alternative of potassium permanganate as oxidant or treatment for manganese given that um, si potassium permanganate ay PNP permit so medyo hassle sa amin um, kaya we are looking into a replacement or um, alternative as reliability baka po pwede si potassium dichromate sodium permanganate and of course um, chlorine dioxide for caustic soda we are also exploring to use magnesium hydroxide sbs liquid we are using um looking into um the sbs powder then the pacl liquid we are exploring the pacl powder so all of this um still under study and um we are um of course the decision to to replace because um syempre itong mga nasa green tried and tested na ito kumbaga um hindi naman namin basta-bastang palitan kung um, mako-compromise naman yung performance ng planta. It has to go through um, a lot of jar test, um, plant trials, bago namin siya um, papalitan kasi we, we wouldn't want to compromise as well the performance of the plant and the quality of water that we are going to distribute. Kaya nasa study stage pa itong mga nasa orange. And um, for our upcoming facilities, we have the Kalawis treatment plant um, that will be in um, late 2022. And the East Bay, as I mentioned, so the Kalawis treatment plant is getting water class C from Wawa, Kalawis and Wawa River. And then East Bay, Laguna Lake. So, kung mga ganito yung mga raw water sources, syempre, sometimes... Um, the chemicals that we will be needing will really depend on saan ang galing yung source. So for Kalawis, we are um, the contractor that is um, building the plant are con looking into polyaluminum chloride for East Bay, ferric chloride again, then caustic soda pa rin, then sulfuric, polymer, cationic, anionic, potassium. Kung kamukha lang din siya halos ng Cardona for East Bay kasi meron din siyang um, reverse osmosis. So the blue ones are it's being um um kung baga binigay na to kasi the these treatment plants are already awarded to the contractors so they are looking for um based on the design that they build they are looking for these um chemicals that they will be using in the design that they they for the treatment plants to be installed in Kalawis and East Bay. Okay, so of course, um, these are just a list. Um, we will not be limiting ourselves from the list that are here kasi we, we wouldn't say naman na alam namin lahat kung ano yung available na chemical sa market, kung ano yung meron at ma-offer na pwede namin magamit. So I already mentioned to you the type of raw water that we are using and probably we will be in partnership as to um, to choose, no? Kumbaga, mahanap ang pinaka, at the end of the day, in terms of performance at very efficient pa rin ang aming um, kukunin or masusunod. And thank you very much for that very insightful and comprehensive uh, presentation, Miss Lynn. 
So now that we know, I'm sure now while you are listening to the discussions from Sir Dom, Ms. Lynn, and all the presentations that were made earlier by Crifton and Bradstreet, you're wondering, okay, based on the information that na nasabi kanina, my company, I think, will qualify based on the uh, specific requirements and technical requirements of MWCI. And now, probably for especially those na wala pang business relationships with MWCI, you're wondering what's next? How do I move forward? How do I then capture and maximize these opportunities? And to talk about the, uh, the process of uh, accreditation and the process of application for MWCI, we would like to introduce Ms. Uh, Catherine Sanota. She is the vendor sourcing and support head for MWCI to talk about the technical accreditation process for chemical suppliers and vendors. Ms. Catherine, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Arden. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, Manila Water Vendors and soon to be vendors. So I am uh, Catherine Sanota from the Supply Chain Management Group under the Vendor Sourcing and Support Department. So before I start my presentation, I would like to um, say thank you to Chris D and B, uh, our dear panelists, uh, my colleagues in Manila Water, and of course to our valued vendors, potential vendors, and our guests from the Chemical Association of the Philippines. So thank you very much, Paul, for supporting the Manila Water's Vendors Forum. So you may have heard of our department, Pono, as we are the team responsible for the accreditation of Manila Water Vendors and for handling your day-to-day uh, -day con concerns. So for this afternoon, uh, I'll be sharing a short overview of the technical accreditation procedures for interested vendors. And of course, to refresh our existing vendors if they would also like to supply other chemicals to Manila Water. So before I proceed with the technical evaluation process, I will just refresh everyone with the list of the Manila Water chemical requirements uh, that Mamlin has already mentioned in her presentation earlier. And as also mentioned, aside from this list, Manila Water is also exploring other alternative chemicals to expand our options as part of our cost efficiency measures. And as our valued uh, vendors, I also hope to hear from your suggestions, your recommendations on the alternative chemicals that we can utilize in our plant as part of our chemical contingency plans. Well, I've heard from, from previous discussions no, with the president of the Chemical Association of the Philippines that they are also interested to present some of the alternative products that we could explore in our treatment plants. So we're, we are looking forward to that discussion, sir. And these chemicals are being utilized in our day-to-day -day operations in our three uh, major treatment plants that has been mentioned also by Ms. Lee the Balara treatment plant, the East La Mesa treatment plant, and the newest of the three is the Cardona treatment plant in Cardona Rizal. So that's it for my presentation this afternoon. Um, thank you, and we are looking forward to working with you in our future bid events. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Ms. Catherine, for, um, <laughs> for that presentation. Maraming maraming salamat po. But speaking of uh, bit information, we would like to welcome now Ms. Mira Gloria Bautista, the Operational Planning and Procurement Head from MWCI. Ms. Mira will be talking about MWCI's bidding process and meron din po tayong hinandang um, flow presentation video later on that we will flash on your screen after Ms. Mira's presentation. Ms. Mira, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Okay, so magandang hapon po sa mga aming katubig, sa aming partners. It's been a long, long time when we had our vendors forum and I can't uh, remember when was it. But it's good to be back and to have this kind of rolled out with you. So basically po, I'm just asked no, to uh, walk you through with the bidding process po. So kanina, I think na discuss naman sa si inyo yung accreditation. So once po na na-accredit na kayo, Definitely, you will be one of our bidders. Next slide. Okay, so yung topics ko, so I will be discussing the types of bidding 
that we actually execute in Manila Water. And I will have uh, generally walk you through briefly on the procurement process flow and just a quick reminders lang. Ano yung mga watch out and look outs natin during or when submitting a bid. Okay, this is our just few reminders. Again, we would like to remind everyone na uh, syempre once we invite you, dapat po yung ating CRIF, DNB accreditation must be updated, renewed, and active. Then the second reminder will be the submission of bid proposal must be on time, and that is a must. So for any request for ex extension, so you have to submit it three days prior the bid due date. Wag po naman yung oras o minuto tayo magre-request because it will not be allowed. Okay? Ensure completeness of the required documents. So any inc incomplete bid proposal will be non-compliant and will be disqualified. Please make sure. And if required, bid bond is part of your submission as well. And make sure lang yung value and validity is the same as required or reflected in the instruction to bidders. And if required, financial proposal should be password protected. Vendor will only provide password once required. So these are the major, ito yung kasi yung mga ano, na-observe na namin for the past bidding. So we just have to uh, be conscious on these reminders. Otherwise po, uh, kahit sa tingin nyo kayo ay karapat dapat, pero may incomplete, I'm, I apologize, but you will be disqualified po. Thank you very much, Ms. Mira, for the presentation. I believe na meron pong uh, special announcement na ang team ng MWCI, we would like to call on our our next speaker for for the very very quick announcement sir marius billaronte sir marius thank you very much for joining us this afternoon hi hello good afternoon good afternoon everyone uh good afternoon to the vendors who have attended this vendors forum so there this will be a short announcement regarding the contract management of, of uh the supply chain group so for all the existing and potential material and chemical vendors, we would like to invite you for a contract orientation. So this will tackle different uh, different uh, types of the contracts that we will be using uh, during your engagement with us. So uh, the details will be sent to your email after the vendors forum. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sir Marius, for that uh, quick announcement. And now we would like to uh, call on Mr. Hennessy Merced. Mr. Hennessy is the Materials Planning Manager from MWCI, and he'll be talking about Manila Water payment process. Sir Hennessy, thank you very much for joining us, and you can now start your presentation. So good afternoon, everyone, especially sa mga vendors that uh, participate sa vendors forum today. So I will be discussing a overview process, an over a general overview of our disbursement process, for yung aming payment process. Thank you very much, Sir Hennessy. As we mentioned uh, before your presentation, if you are an existing vendor of Manila Water and you have some clarification or questions regarding your account or um, release of payment, you can email so um, yeah, the team can accommodate your uh, questions and clarifications thank you very much sir hennessy and i'm sure by now we've heard the uh, chemical requirements of manila water we've also as i'm sure when we're processing the information we also did a self-evaluation if our company is able to supply the requirements we are already prepared and i'm sure we're also ready on the uh, CRIF, Dun & Bradstreet pre-qualification side, the technical requirement side, as well as the uh, submission of bids and tender. And that's uh, all the objective that we really want to set out for this event, which is to educate you and to give all the uh, existing and potential business partners of Manila Water the uh, knowledge on the tools and the processes for you to engage with MWCI. However, and as an added uh, educational value to all the 300 plus uh, companies na hanggang ngayon ay nakikinig pa rin sa atin, we also invited one of the uh, thought leader within the uh, chemical manufacturing and um, supply sector, representing the Samahan sa Pilipinas ng mga industriyang kemika, 
or the Chemical Industries Association of the Philippines, Crifton and Bradstreet, and MWCI invited Mr. Dennis Tirdas, the president of the association, to give us some little bit of insight regarding the uh, trends in your sector, as well as some key information that you may want to know as you move forward with your business. Sir Dennis, thank you very much for uh, taking the time out to, to join us this afternoon. Hello, uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much, Ardine. First of all, on behalf of the members of the Samahan sa Pilipinas ng Industria Kimika, I would like to thank uh, CRF uh, BND Philippines for inviting us to participate in today's webinar. We also know that CRF DNB Philippines is uh, committed to support and help business in the country to grow through data utilization. They do this by building strategic partners and managing supply chain to suppliers acc accreditation, more commonly known as the vendor integrity assess. Earlier, this has been explained explained uh, how it can empower companies, it can mitigate risk, reduce cost, and source suppliers ethically. After going through the agenda of this webinar, I'd like to take this opportunity to express speak support for the event as it would definitely help accelerate the industry's recovery in the new normal and in the long haul help in attainment of Philippine chemical industry vision for sustainable growth. Allow me to give you a brief background and vision of the Samahan sa Pilipinas ng Industria Chemica or the Chemical Industry Association of the Philippines, also known as SPIK or SPIK. It was organized over 30 years ago and today as a membership of 82 chemical companies and affiliated industries association. The association has taken upon itself to be the voice of the chemical industry in the Philippines. This is done by participating, representing to liaison and to lobby alongside with different regulating government agencies and legislator and by aiming the many concerns that affect the chemical industry. The main advocacy of SPIC is Responsible Care. Responsible Care is an industry initiative that advocates chemical, advocated by the chemical industry worldwide to demonstrate its commitment to sustainable growth. Let me share with you the seven codes of Responsible Care. The first one is Community Awareness and Emergency Response Code, which was the first code in November 1989. The next one is Pollution Prevention Code, Process Safety Code, Distribution Code, Employees Health and Safety Code, Product Stewardship Code, and Chemical Security. In late 2014, the government, through the Board of Investment and the Department of Trade and Industry, tasked SPIC to prepare the Chemical Industry Roadmap for the Philippines covering the period of 2016 to 2030. In a nutshell, the vision of the Philippine chemical industry in 2030 is to engage in transforming the nation's basic resources into a wide range of higher value products that serve domestic and global markets with best customer value. It is committed to attract, develop, and retain the best talents who will be the forefront of product and process innovation while adhering to sustainable and responsible care principles. This is, this is done by relentlessly improving products and processes. It will achieve sustainable goal, growth and thus contribute to the nation's inclusive growth and socioeconomic development. The attainment of this vision was slowed down by the COVID-19 pandemic. And the chemical industry is facing and accepting this great challenge with great optimism. 
We have worked tediously in preparing our individual business continuity plans and updating continuously the plan as the norm and trends of the new normal unfolds. Webinars such as this are venues where there is good exchange of the latest trend, norms, technology that will help transition, adapt, and become accustomed to the new normal. It can give the participants new insights on how to enhance the value chain to the many platforms and resources available. Let us fearlessly face these new challenges of the new normal and boldly seize the boundless opportunities that the future has to offer. Correspondingly, I would like to encourage our speak member companies, suppliers, customers, and members of the Affiliate Chemical Association in the Philippines to continue to support the Buy Philippine products and take an active role in our government's effort for a sustainable economic recovery in the new normal. Thank you and mabuhay. Thank you very much, Sir Dennis, um, for the wonderful and insightful na remarks that we gained in you. Sir Dennis, and I'm sure some of the companies are um, asking as we move forward with our Q&A, we'll start with you. Uh, do you have qualifications in terms of your uh, membership? Because majority of the companies that we have this afternoon are under the uh, supply, um, chemical supply and manufacturing sector. So they might be interested to join the advocacy and the uh, association of SBIK. Well, if you want to be a member, uh, you can be a chemical company or other support groups of the chemical company like logistics and distribution um, and like insurance companies, uh, forward there, uh, all that that has that has uh, something to do with servicing the chemical industry can become a member of the speaks. Uh, all you have to do is visit our website and just uh, uh, make a formal uh, request to be a member and a membership. Uh, application form will be forwarded to you. It's as simple as that. Then uh, we just uh, make sure that that you are a legitimate company. There's a committee that lo looks into your 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 company, and then after paying the required dues, then you will be inducted to the association. Thank you very much, so Sir Dennis. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And thank you, everyone. So, good afternoon. Uh, for this afternoon, I just want to um, emphasize um, three points. Uh, I want to inform everyone that in the coming years, we will have uh, more and more facilities uh, to build. And uh, these facilities needs uh, additional suppliers and additional service provider to continue um to continue the operation of vanilla water and um achieve our service obligation so uh, with that we uh, ask our suppliers and service providers um including those that are new and uh who's planning to apply for accreditation so we want um secondly we want to um encourage you to complete your accreditation process up to technical evaluation because that's uh, very important to Manila Water that will be the basis of our shortlisting process, our selection process. So uh, it's very important for us to obtain those information for us to have an accurate uh, decision in selecting our uh, invited bidders. And um, lastly, I want to remind everyone that if you have any concern or you want to ask question or uh, give us feedback about uh, uh, needs, um, uh, needed improvement in our process, not just on procurement, on our payment implementation um, uh, process, uh, that is a very welcome to the organization. So um, earlier, 
uh, there are um, email addresses flash on the screen. So aside from the vendor's hotline, uh, we included Aryan's uh, email address, Claire, so that uh, you can raise any issues. And we are also opening our um, our email address. You can, if you know my email address or Catherine Sanota's email address, uh, you can um, contact us uh, through email or even call us just to give us any feedback that you want to raise. So again, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Joanna, for closing our program. And again, for those who are still uh, tuning in and listening in, we will send the uh, copy of the presentations. Again, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong pagdalo and sa inyong pakikinig. This has been Criff, Don and Bradstreet, and MWCI's collaboration for um, the uh, Chemical Supplier Vendor Forum. Nagpapasalamat din po kami kay Sir Dennis, from SPIK. Thank you very much, Sir Dennis, for, for joining us and representing your sector during this webinar. If you would like to hear more from Criff on Brad Street, please uh, follow us on the uh, social media handles that you are now seeing in your screen. Thank you very much to all the 300 strong vendors who joined us. Thank you very much to the strong team of MWCI who served as our panel and our speakers this afternoon. Thank you very much, Sir Dennis, for joining us. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Keep safe. And we hope to see you as a vendor of MWCI and as a member of Vendor Integrity Access soon. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a good afternoon.